Howdy folks, this is the review and walkthrough of the Ambient Weather Observer Solar Powered Wireless Wi-Fi Weather Station. The model of this one is WS1000 Wi-Fi. And the purpose of this weather station, unlike the one that I have now, is that it will actually automatically, via Wi-Fi, supposed to go ahead and transmit the data to Weather Underground and then you can get your weather data remotely. Currently I have the WS2090 version of the ambient weather station and the problem with this one, even though it works great, is that my computer has to be on 24-7 in order to transmit the data from uh, the console, which is again connected 24-7 to the computer, and the computer is on 24-7 and transmits the data to Weather Underground. So hopefully with the replacement unit that I have, I should be able to avoid uh, from keeping my computer on and just have the data available in the console and then transmit the data via Wi-Fi. All right, let's take a look and see what's included here in the box. All right, so in this unit, what we have here is the display console. We will also have the thermo hydrom hydrometer barometer transmitter, which is this unit. We will have the mounting bracket. In this case, it's already attached. And we will have, of course, the sensor array. We'll have the wind vane, which I assume we'll have to attach here in just a second to the unit. And of course, we will also have, and I'm using the manual, so of course you guys will get the manual, but I'm using this right now in order to make sure my terminology is correct. You'll have the 5 volt VC adapter, or DC adapter. You'll have uh, the pole, which you'll have two of those. One of them is going to be straight, and then the other one is going to be crumpled. You'll have the pole mounting U-bolt in order to mount the pole to the... Uh, mounting uh, station or pole that you're going to be using and you'll have an allen wrench looks like it has three screws in this packet as well and then like I said the user manual which I'm using right now all right let's go ahead and get it set up install the wind vane to the array here and we'll use the allen wrench to tighten it down All right, so this part is done. Now we'll go ahead and attach our mounting pole to the unit. And from the manual, it looks like we need to remove this bracket here, the plastic bracket. And the way they have it, so I assume we'll use both of the poles. Um, one of them is crumpled, the other one is not. But it looks like, because they don't fit into each other, even though I thought they should. So basically, it looks like those notches here need to correspond to the notches that are inside the unit and that's how we'll see to and make sure that it stays in place there we go now it does not move and then this plastic bracket goes in here and then we'll we need to tighten them down by to, turning it clockwise so I think we're good the unit comes with uh, three rechargeable alkaline batteries. They're rated for 1.5 volts each. And we'll be installing them into this compartment right here. Once the batteries have been installed, uh, according to the manual, uh, the LED indicator on the bottom of the sensor array will turn on for 4 seconds and then normally flash once per 16 seconds. That's the transmission update period and it is located right here. So after I started the batteries, I wasn't paying attention for the first 4 seconds. However, um, we do see that it is blinking every 16 seconds. and. Um, 
yeah there it is the other item I will mention really quick is that there is a sticker here uh, do not remove it when I got the station here about an hour ago I wasn't sure if I should remove it or not so I sent them an email asking about the sticker and if it's um, okay or if we should do anything with it and I got a reply here a few minutes ago actually before starting taping uh, or filming um, this and they said basically they have a reset some sort of a button below and that's the purpose of the sticker is not to utilize it now but I guess if there is a need to reset the station at some point then we can go ahead and reboot it all right we got the new weather station up and a winter storm with some snow coming down I initially wanted to set up the station the two stations side by side for reading comparison but I was not able to do so without spending too much extra on hardware so I ended up just mounting the station and it's finally up and running okay since the outer unit is up and running now we can focus on the console and then the indoor uh, temperature barometer and the humidity uh, reading. I'm just booting the console for your benefit of showing you the process. However, uh, it has already been set up and what you do want to do is to make sure that you put in the batteries into the indoor sensor first before actually uh, turning up the console. This way when the console is turning on it should already read the outdoor information as well as the uh, indoor uh, sensor. And I'm only booting this for your benefit so you can see uh, the Buddha process for the ambient weather WS1000 Wi-Fi unit. At the moment I'm actually keeping the indoor sensor uh, close to the console and then eventually I'll find another uh, good spot for it and have that uh, mounted because in the back of the unit you can actually mount the bracket uh, to any location um, on the wall. All right, so you can see here the console, it has boot up and then now it also give us, gives us the outdoor and the indoor readings. So here is the view of the console up close. In the upper left hand section of the screen you will see that it will actually show you a chart and you can actually control what it displays on this chart. Uh, right now I have it set to display the barometer information but you can also control that and change that to display the indoor and outdoor temperature as well as the indoor or outdoor humidity. You can also choose the time period in terms of for how back you want the data to be displayed within the settings menu and I believe you can choose 12 12, 24, 48, and also the 72 hour uh, history information to be displayed on the graph. Below that is the information for the solar radiation. Uh, given the current time of day, uh, there is no solar radiation at the moment, so that's why we're not having any readings. Below that is the barometer information. If you're selecting the relative barometer information, you actually have to go ahead and manually set uh, the current setting from the calibration uh, section within the menu. Moving on to the right, uh, it is the rainfall information. Mine is currently set for daily rain data. However, you can go ahead and change that between weekly rain, monthly, yearly, rain rate, or back to daily rain. Uh, going back to the upper uh, section here, uh, it will display the wind data and give us the direction and then to the right it will actually display the current uh, wind speed and then the wind gusts right below that. So the current wind speed is uh, 0.2 miles per hour and then the wind gusts are 2.5 miles per hour and then the data below that it is going to be the wind chill. Moving on uh, down, you will see that there are actually going to be two items uh, displayed here and it is actually going to display whether or not you're connected to the Wi-Fi, that is the green bars that you see right here. And then to the left, it is actually going to be the data whether or not uh, this console is transmitting, transmitting to weather underground. And since that is the case, uh, that's why both of the icons are on, because I have already set them up. If you do not have it set up, then obviously those icons will not show up. Moving on down, the next item here is the indoor reading from the sensor and the humidity. And again, it's reading it from the indoor sensor here and the humidity. And as you can see, 
with all the lights on in the room it is actually getting very nice and warm here because the number below uh, the indoor number is the outdoor temperature and it is 15.6 Fahrenheit right now with 81 percent humidity and that's because it is snowing and then the last number on the bottom here it is actually going to be the dew point Let's do a quick overview of the buttons that are available here on the console. I will add that those buttons will change functions once you are into some of the menus, but from the general perspective and by default from the main screen, this button here will go ahead and increase the brightness of the screen. The next one here will go ahead and decrease the brightness of the screen. And then the third button here will actually allow you to turn off the screen or turn on the screen if you need uh, to do so. I will later show you an option within the menu system where you can program the screen to go off or on at a specific time. The next button here is going to be the charts or graphs button and uh, this is where you can change what type of information is displayed on the console. The next item here is going to be the barometer which you can change whether you want the relative or the absolute reading. And then the following button right here is going to be the rainfall information where again you can change the, the time period for the rainfall. And then the history reading button is right here where you can enter the uh, history uh, screen and then you can get the maximum lows, highs and then review the periodic uh, history records that are in the computer's uh, data log. And finally, this button right here, it is going to be the menu for the setup of the control console where you can configure settings as well as many other options. So here's a quick look at the setup screen where you can control uh, the and set up the date and time and also control a time server. So if this unit has been set up with Wi-Fi access, then you can actually designate a time server to uh, get the data from in the console. You can also uh, designate different units uh, to be displayed within the console. Uh, they're generally self-explanatory, so we'll go ahead and move forward. One thing I will show you is that for the uh, backlight setup, you do have a capability, which I really do like, and it is to set the unit, which is this console, to be turned the display to be turned on and off at a specific time, and I, I kind of find it helpful so that you know in this case right now I have it set for 10:42 p.m. The console can go off when I don't actually need to uh, use it, and then right now it is set to turn on at 7 a.m. For example, it also has the capability to do automatic uh, brightness adjustment. Currently, I have that uh, to be set off. Uh, uh, because as I said earlier, I'm actually set, have it set up to be about medium in terms of brightness and it seems to work just fine. If you continue going through the menu setup, the next item here is going to be the alarm setup. So if you want the console to alert you if any of the conditions that you set on the screen becomes true, it will actually go ahead and start beeping alerting you that the alarm is on. And then the next item on the menu setup here is the calibration screen where you can actually calibrate and set up the console if you need to make any adjustments. Uh, the main one that you do need to do is if you have your uh, barometer set to relative reading, you actually need to go to this unit here and then adjust the reading based on the current uh, information that you have. And normally you'll go from the airport weather station or the closest correct relative barometer reading. I shall add that even though you have set this up uh, to relative, the actual unit here, I know it's kind of hard to see, uh, let me move the light a little bit, so the actual unit here, it will still give you the absolute reading and I'm not sure if there's a way to fix that or adjust that or not. So in my case, the absolute reading doesn't do me any good simply because uh, of my elevation, which is why I have set my barometer reading to the relative values adjusted for elevation. All right, moving forward. So the next item here is going to be uh, the factory screen. And basically here you can uh, register or re-register the transmitters. You can also clear the history and clear the minimum maximum values. You can also reset the unit to factory defaults. You can backup the data and you have the ability to choose uh, from several languages.
The only recommendation I'll make on this screen is once you have everything set up, I went ahead and uh, cleared my maximum minimum values as well as the clear history as through the setup process the readings were just incorrect. So uh, when I was setting up the outdoor unit or even if I was working with the indoor unit, uh, I did throw off some of the data and information. So it will have uh, data that were not correct. So in this case, I actually went ahead and reset it and I need to go ahead and do it again since I'm still kind of playing with the unit. But that is basically the setup uh, menu. I did find the setup of the Wi-Fi as well as the Weather Underground setup to be fairly simple. With the Wi-Fi, it will scan the networks that are, that are within the area. And then once you choose your own network, it lets you put in the password and then it will connect to Wi-Fi, so that wasn't um, an issue. And then for the weather server uh, setup, it was as simple as going to Weather Underground and just inputting your weather station ID that you got from Weather Underground and then the password for your Weather Underground account. And that was all uh, that needs to be done. So what I want to show you here is that on the right, uh, you're just looking at the laptop here and I have Weather Underground pulled up. And on the left, of course, is the uh, ambient weather uh, console. And one really cool thing that I find is that as soon as the console gets an update, within one or two seconds, you can actually see the updated information live on Weather Underground. So it just works so nice, so cool, as you can see right now. See the uh, the weather, the wind information changed and then like one two seconds later it'll go ahead go ahead and update the weather underground so uh, just seeing how live and how quickly it updates it it is actually really cool as you can see just the wind indicator changed and then of course uh, the uh, weather underground uh, changed as well so it is just really cool to see and compare how quickly the data is truly being updated and when you're away from home and you want to take a look at the changes in the data well there you go just pull up weather underground and you can look at it live well guys uh that's all that i have for this video walkthrough of the ambient weather ws 1000 wi-fi uh hopefully you enjoyed this video uh walkthrough and if you still made it till the end congratulations uh this is my first uh video re walkthrough review type of a deal so uh, hopefully it wasn't too painful for you to watch. Uh, overall this unit seems to uh, work well, I have no issues uh, with it. Hopefully longevity wise it will last a long time and then that's gonna be great. That's the only thing I can ask for um, at this point. In terms of uh, improvements I don't have anything big honestly. Uh, in terms of fu future revisions maybe uh, having a s weather a sensor or temperature sensor inside the console in addition to having the remote sensor so this way if you want to monitor uh, two locations I think that would be a really cool feature uh, to have a sensor in the console and then you can have it in one room and then put uh, the remote sensor somewhere else uh, I think that would be would be a great addition having the uh, barometer information as relative data uh, would be nice too right now it's only reads as absolute not a big deal because I have the console uh, that's gonna be another item in terms of usability within the console overall it's not bad it's fairly uh, uh, s simple uh, setup but it could be simplified even more so to speak uh, there, are, there are many usability features that could be taken advantage of because there are several buttons and even though there are several left and right arrows throughout the menu system you can't utilize them only going up and down so uh, that along with several other uh, usability options that could be uh, taken advantage of because this is a great display it seems that it has some sort of an operating system so I assume it I mean it must have a processor too and based on that uh, they can make even uh, better uh, improvements to take advantage um, of those features also uh, for some individuals who do want uh, the data and to play with the data uh, right now this specific model does not have the ability to connect it uh, via USB and that's because it is a Wi-Fi version so again no complaints uh, from me but for some individuals uh, I think that may be an issue and if this was Wi-Fi and had the ability for somebody to connect uh, this unit via USB to get the data and utilize other programs such as Cumulus I think that could be uh, an added bonus 
And the alternative to that, if somebody if somebody really wants to do it with this unit, they can still do it by uh, putting a micro SD card to the back of the console, and there is an option for it here, and then you can actually save the logs to that SD card. Now, that means each time you want to do an analysis, you'll have to do that, uh, but at least uh, that's an option. So maybe in the future versions, uh, that is something to be uh, considered. And uh, the only other thing is that the mounting pole on the weather station, I do wish that it was just a tad a bit longer. Uh, it's uh, fine the way it is, and I'm using gear clamps, but if I were to be using the U-bolts, uh, again, it's usable, but if it was just a little bit longer, I think um, utilizing them would make it just a bit easier for some of the people uh, who will be actually utilizing those U-bolts. That's all I have, and uh, again, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, walkthrough, and uh, have a great day. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.